What's up guys, Ketis here and welcome to a brand new Pokemon Go video. I know you're used to hearing me say welcome to a brand new FIFA video, but I've been playing Pokemon Go for about a week now and I feel like I've learned enough to give you guys, if you're new to it, some beginner tips and tricks. Now the game of course isn't out in the UK yet, so if you're in the UK, you haven't even had a chance to play it properly unless you've done it the way I have. So I've been playing for a little while and I feel like I've learned enough that I've got some good beginner tips. A lot of people have been asking me on Twitter, even like friends of mine like my brother have been asking for help, so I thought why not make a video because it's stuff that I wanted to learn when I first started and these are just really useful little tips and tricks just to help you along the way. So these are quite frankly in like no serious order and these are really just only useful if you're quite new to the game. If you're not new to the game they probably won't be that useful to you. I will do some more in depth and uh, a little bit better tips and tricks for if you're further on in the game on the channel throughout the week so if you want to keep your eyes open for that then be sure to do so. But firstly I want to say what I think is honestly one of the most important ones is to just catch every Pokemon you can, duplicates are good. When I first first started playing, all I was interested in is just filling up my Pokedex and just getting good Pokemon. Now, that's all good and well at the start. You want to get yourself some good Pokemon, but really, the key thing you want to do is to catch, it, it, like me, I have about 50 Rattatatas out that window every single minute. There's just always Rattatatas there. Now, if you just keep catching them and catching them and catching them, you get Rattatata candy. And you think, of course, yep, so you can evolve your Rattatatas. Well, every time you evolve a Pokemon, you get 500 XP for it. And the higher level you are, the better Pokemon you see, the higher level the Pokemon are. So, realistically, you want to just keep getting these low level Pokemon and just evolving them, evolving them, but just only do the lowest evolution because you get 500 XP no matter what Pokemon it is. So it's definitely worth evolving every Rattata, every Pidgey, just keep catching them regardless. Now the next one I think this is quite useful. For me, uh, if I look around my map, as you can see on the screen now, there's just lots of Pokestops on this road like adjacent to my road. And this is massive. This is something that you should really try and do if you're going to go out on a Pokewalk. Find somewhere with a good section of Pokestops and just loop it. Because you get, they really set every five minutes and they actually change color they go as I'm going to show you here if it lets me so as you can see it goes to a very dark purple instantly as soon as you do it then when it's about 30 seconds away it goes to a lighter pink color and then it's back to blue it's usually five minutes between the pokestop reset so if you can find somewhere that takes you about six seven minutes to just do a loop up and down it you'll be catching pokemon as you go and just getting constant pokestops which gets you 50 xp per pokestop so pretty useful to level up and to get yourself some supplies now for me, as you can see, there's some uh, some Pokestops with lures on them. So for example, if I go to this one down here, you're going to see it's got like petals falling off it. I was a bit confused about that at first. But basically, you get these things called lure modules. As you can see here, someone called Mr. Plows has put a lure module on there. And what that means, as you can see, I've got one as well. I've got a couple, as you can see right there. What it does, it basically attracts Pokemon to that Pokestop for 30 minutes. And unlike the incense, which you may have seen, this pops up for everyone. So it won't just be you that gets the benefit of it. Anyone that comes near it gets the Pokemon that go near the lore module. So, if you see, oh, there's a lore module a three minute walk away, and you're pretty early in spotting it, I'd suggest heading over there because a lot of Pokemon will constantly go through. I'm lucky that there's a Pokestop right next to my house, as you can see there. And quite frequently, there's a lore module put on it. And even if it's just rubbish Pokemon, sometimes you get good ones, but there's just a constant flow, one or two every couple minutes, whereas normally you won't naturally see them just walking by your house all the time. So it's really worth keeping an eye on the lure modules. Now this one I think is quite honestly one of the most important ones. Now, I sadly didn't do this one and didn't pay attention to this, but you need to discuss with your friends before you pick what team. When you hit level five, you get to pick a team. You can be yellow, blue, and red. It's Valor, Mystic, and Instinct. Uh, red is Valor, blue is Mystic, and yellow is Instinct. I'm pretty sure that's right. I think I've got it right. But you need to discuss with your friends what you want to be. So when you're taking on gyms, for example, there's a gym right here. As you're going to see on the gym, and this one's quite important as well. It took me a while to learn this. As you can see at the top, it says gym level 3. Level 3 is how many Pokemon they can have guarding it. So this is level 3, so they can have 3 Pokemon on it. You level it up if you are yellow by sparring the gym. So say it's your colour, in the bottom right there'll be like a little bo boxing glove. And you can spar your own gym to level it up to put more Pokemon there. And that way you're levelling up the gym so it's harder to take over by other people. And then once you hold a gym for like a day you start getting XP and bonuses. If you want to take down a gym, you fight it and you have to go through the whole gym and then you're knocking the XP down until it goes to zero and there's no Pokemon there. Do you get what I mean? So for that sake, you can only put one Pokemon per person in there. So if you all pick yellow, you can all go take over the yellow gym or make the gym yellow and you can put two or three Pokemon in there if there's a few of you. Now... Sadly, me and my girlfriend have been playing it quite a lot and she decided to pick yellow and I picked red and that for us 
is annoying because now we're battling against each other for gyms and can't help each other. So that is honestly one of my biggest tips. If you want to be successful in gyms, make sure you and your friends pick the same team. Even if you have like a bit of an affinity to one of the teams, it's really important that you need to stick together. If you want to be successful with gyms, you need to know other people that have got it. Now these last two are to do with uh, catching Pokemon and actually there isn't one close enough uh, for me to show you but next time there is one I'm going to record it so you can see on the screen right now what I mean. So there's two different important things to learn when catching Pokemon. Firstly, uh, as you go further on you'll see about raspberries or raspberries. They are important to catch big Pokemon but for now you don't really need to know that. But if you want to maximise the XP you can get there's two different things. So you can do curveballs. As you're going to see I'm spinning on the screen with the Pokeball and then launching it and then it curves around. And you get better XP if you launch a good curveball at a Pokemon. You get an extra 10, extra 50 depending on what it is. So that's you Useful. You want to get as much XP as possible, and as soon as you master it, it's really easy. And also, as you'll see, when you go to when you hold down on a Pokemon and the circle goes bigger and smaller, if it's green, it should be a really easy catch. But then there's also an orange and a dark brown, and those two are really important. If it's an orange one, it's gonna be a little bit tricky to get. If it's a dark brown, honestly, you should put a raspberry on it. That means you're most likely not gonna get it, and you need to get a perfect throw to be able to hit it. If you don't do that and it is a dark brown circle, then you could be in a situation where you miss out on the Pokemon completely, it runs away and you lose it. You don't ever want to be in that situation because you want to catch all the best Pokemon you see. So make sure, if you see it's a darker colour, an orange or a brown, make sure to use your raspberries because it's really important. But like I said, the curveballs are good for XP. Now guys, like I said, that is pretty much the stuff I think is really important to know when you start it. But I'm going to be doing loads more tips and tricks as the week goes on, on my channel. So I would recommend you subscribe to it if you haven't already. Let me know down below what stuff you would like to find out about because I pretty much know almost everything about the game now. Uh, from what from what we've experienced so far, of course, there's probably more that will happen. But I'm pretty experienced in the game, so if you guys need any more tips or any ideas, let me know in the comments down below and maybe I can make a video on it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Smash that like button if you did. Subscribe if you're new around here. Have a fantastic day. I'll see you all next time. Bye.